well here I am this is a very odd backdrop isn't it well I went down to the lobby I've got breakfast but I'm not overly hungry yet so I think I'll save it just for you know in a few minutes after I talk to you all okay let me catch my breath a little bit I'll tell you Here's some constant comment for ya. If you'd like to share some tea with me. Okay, cheers. I think it's hot, let me take this off. But, see my breathing? Why am I breathing so rough? Why am I in a hotel room? Why aren't I in my van, right? Why aren't I? Well, I'll tell ya. In just a minute, in case you're, you're new here. It's part of the, it's part of the program. Overcoming disasters in van life. Now what constitutes a disaster? In my mind, a disaster is anything that keeps you from living in your home. That's a disaster. Now, you know, you could, okay, you could just like not feel well, but you're still in your home. But I'm talking about a disaster that, that, that takes you out of your home, your van. And there's a lot of things that can happen. So I want to talk about that because I have examples. I've, I've had a few myself and I'd like to go over those. Now. The disasters could involve an illness. Well, hello. And, but I know uh, a couple other illnesses that have happened. Um, what about vehicle repairs? You, well, I don't know if that constitutes a disaster. Well, it depends. The disaster depends on the degree of the repairs. Yeah. What about a serious accident? Oh, <laughs> wow. That will put you out of your van, possibly forever, that particular uh, vehicle, that'll put you out forever. And then you have to go get another one. What about a disaster in the area? Um, you know, there are scenarios that could get you out of your van or, <coughs> or um, you'll have to come up with a plan to get out of that area, which I would constitute is a disaster. It might not get you out of your van. It might actually get you in it and hightail out. And then, of course, I'm going to put down a disaster in your life that's going to cre that's going to create a lot of changes, which can be, in a way, an emotional disaster is a loss of a partner, whether it be death or a breakup. Um, I have been through that and I would pretty much say that really um, changed my life in a big way um, over the past six months. And I've talked about that, so I won't go into that. But uh, that is one of the things that I would constitute as being a disaster in van life. Let me just set this up. I have um, been up since like 4.30 this morning because I went to bed so early. So I got myself, I know I got a shower washed my hair, tried to beautify myself a little bit, and when, as soon as um, breakfast opened up, I went down. Now today is Eclipse Day, happy Eclipse Day. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to stay away from it all. I'm not sure why, it, it, it interests me, but yet it doesn't interest me, I think, because I've got all of this going on and have gone on, and I will explain if you're new. So let's talk about an illness. Anything can happen. It comes on very suddenly, even when you are so healthy, but some other, but maybe another event happens that brings your immune system down just a little bit. And then bam, this uh, very microscopic entity comes in and changes your life and turns it upside down called a virus. Yes, I mean, they're microscopic, but they will attack you and they will take your life down and sometimes kill you. Isn't that amazing? Well, I did get a letter, this one, 
because I um all of you, most of you know that I've got um fibrobronchitis right now. And what it does is it totally constricts um your bronchial tubes and makes it hard to breathe. It can take up to two weeks to a month to completely heal from it, and then the cough can last eight to ten weeks. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, but you know what? And I'm going to talk about this. I'm looking for a good outcome because going down into the lobby was so um, much easier this morning. Yeah. And my recovery time of uh, trying to catch my breath, so much better. But I do have a letter here that knocked my socks off. go. This is from Kelly Pierce. Hey, Kelly, listen to this letter. I was in the hospital for a week from the end of February to the beginning of March with menin meningitis. Because I mentioned meningitis. In 1980, I had spinal meningitis. That was the sickest I've ever been in my entire life. I only remember the last four days that I was there. Yeah, I can imagine. It came out of nowhere. See, it just comes out of nowhere. My meningitis, is, it's a virus. And it's floating in the air. Yeah, it's easy to catch. When somebody gets it, it's easy to catch from somebody else. And if children get it, it can be devastating. They can become um, handicapped, disabled. Um, yeah. It can affect, I knew one gal in college, the reason she was, she was my, one of my de, um, ASL uh, sign language instructors, she got, um, she became deaf because she had meningitis when she was a child. And I've seen children who just, um, they're, they're totally handicapped. Um, they're mentally handicapped and uh, they, their mind, it got into their brain and they're now forever handicapped and, and they have to be cared for um, yeah, so it, it's, it, it can be devastating for children. It came out of nowhere and started as a strep infection. And it turned to, and it just got worse and worse and worse, pneumonia and then spinal meningitis. They sent me home with a pick line and antibiotic infusion bombs. I'm still freaked out over it. Well, I bet. Oh my gosh, yeah. <clears throat> So I, I assume that you're in a house, but if you are in a, um, if you were in your van and you were van van, you didn't mention that. Wow. I mean, you know, let's all discuss what could she have done. Now, I also want to talk about my wonderful, honorable, respectful friend. And I would say one of the most respectful men in the, no, in van life, in the nomad world is Max Dollarite. He was one of the first first dudes I met. Um, he was in a white minivan, and I was my first time in um, and in Quartzite. And so this was when I first, you know, yeah. And uh, I didn't have my YouTube channel or anything, but I met him, and we became good friends. So we've been friends ever since. Well, just this, uh, not too long ago, just a few months ago, he had, we talk often, and he had mentioned that he felt really tired and sometimes he felt a little dizzy, like he was gonna pass out. Well, he went to get it checked out, of, eventually he did. And he's, he's a veteran, so he went to the veteran's hospital and had it checked out. It turns out he needed a pacemaker, you know? And it was funny too, because just on my last video, I talk about the heart biorhythmic um, electricity that comes from the heart, and we have this three foot field around us of, of the energy from our heart. It's an electrical organ. Well, his was an organ as well. So he, and he lived in his van, he lived in his minivan, but he still had, he had the surgery. How did he handle all of that being a nomad and then actually going into recovery time because he had to recover for a while? Well, how did he handle that? He has a huge network. He calls them his tribe. Um, he has a huge network 
of other nomads because he's such a, he's an honorable man and while he also has a lot of friends because he's in there helping them too he is right he is right there to help anybody that needs help yeah it, it, he's amazing he is an amazing man and i am happy to call him my friend i really am so he had to, there there was a long uh progression of events that had to happen and his healing and then moving but he had help all along the way that was his story he had um a pacemaker put in he had surgery while he was a nomad now so it can happen but these things are this is cropped up out of nowhere you know he knew he wasn't feeling well and then bam he was put into surgery very shortly after they found out he needed one now for me it was after right after i met max and that the season of uh courtside you know the rtr that season was over um i was in lake havasu and i became serious seriously ill and in the middle of the night i had to drive to the hospital and it turns out that turned out that i had appendicitis yeah um so there's kind of a disaster i mean you know like you wonder like is my van okay out in the parking lot is you know all of my belongings are out there and um how am i going to get get done what if and the doctor told me that surgery can go many different ways he said you look really healthy you know you're not overweight so the surgery probably is going to be okay but if it isn't it's going to take weeks for you to recover well the surgery went well and I was out of the hospital within a, um, two days. And then I found some BLM land and I had to recover there for another two weeks because um, the surgeon wanted to see me again and just check, make sure before he could give me a clean bill of health. So I had to like hang out on uh, BLM land near Lake Havasu by myself. And I did it. So, you know, these, the, these things, um, these things can happen. These little disasters can happen. Now, what's another disaster that happened just with Ma? Um, two years ago, my van, I was in Quartzsite in my 2006 Kia Sedona um, was just smoking. I mean, there was, I had it towed into a mechanic in Yuma and he looked at it and he basically said, I can't do anything for you. It's too far gone. You have too many leaking gaskets. I know. So, you know, what was I going to do? Well, my partner at that time was, um, I found a, I, I, I was so devastated. I mean, I, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm stuck out here on BLM land. What am I going to do? I, something has to happen. Well, I, I just went right on, on, you know, and looked online and there were a couple of minivans to look at in Tucson. So he drove me to Tucson and I had to take a big chance. It was a salvage title and that's the one I'm driving now. So everything turned out good, but yeah. So that was a disaster for me. I'm stuck out in BLM land and my, and my, and my van doesn't run. What are, you know? Oh my gosh. Um, so now here turned out, here's, a, here's another thing that turned out. I didn't even think to look at the mechanics in, in Quartzsite. And there is a wonderful place. It's called A1 Best RV, um, yeah, Auto RV um, Service. Yeah, they were good. And they were very nice to me. And they really helped me out. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, there's another disaster that can happen. You know, you're good. If you want the nomad life, you just really need to know that not everything is um, rainbows and flowers. Oh my gosh, you're going to have these. You can have these little disasters that happen along the way, but you just need to be resilient. You definitely do. So these are the ways I wrote these down of ways to overcome disasters. And the very first one is friends and family. A lot of you nomads, your family's back east or in Florida or whatever, but you're out here in Arizona. 
So, fam so family isn't always going to be there for you. But if you can make some friends then you, that you can count on, they'll be there for you. Well, if, if they're a friend, they will be there for you. Another thing, too, is sick cash and savings. What happened with me is I went to, um, I went to Ohio. I flew there because I didn't want to drive. It's too long and yeah, to wear and tear on my van. So I flew there. I really was apprehensive about going. I think it was a premonition because since I went, my life has turned upside down. I mean, my life has been upside down since I went. I think it was on the 21st of March. I mean, we're talking about two going maybe on three weeks here. Yeah. I mean, it's totally been turned upside down. Um, uh, my grandson had a bad cough and I think the flying and just being out of my elements, different environment, it, it brought down my immune system and bam. So when I came back, I was a little sick over the flying. I don't, I get motion sickness also. So um, within two, three days of coming back, I was really only in my van about that long and I started feeling very ill. And um, I eventually had to get a hotel room. So I've literally had to be in a hotel for, it's going on eight days and this is um, uber expensive. So that's why I mentioned savings and cash. Yeah, you have to have a good savings um, and, and some cash with you so that you, because you, you may need that. That's what's, that's what's going to happen. Now, when I did get my new van, I went and paid cash for my van. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I still got the cough. It's not as bad. It's not as bad. Sorry, you got to listen to this. Um, <clears throat> I would like to be in, in the hotel longer. But in this one, that they're just the the price. I'm not even sure why, um, because it's going to start getting warm again here in Tucson. But yeah, I think um, today and tomorrow is my last day, and then I got to go back out into my van. But no, this has been a very expensive illness. Um, I ended up in the hospital because I couldn't breathe. I mean, I was not getting oxygen inside of my blood. The numbers were so low, and I knew it was like a. I just moving around, I was just gasping for air because everything was so constricted. So I would consider that kind of a disaster when you can't breathe and all the other body functions are starting to go down too. I did make peace with my maker. I really did. Um, last month, it was a week ago, I, I had to make peace because I thought, this is it. I mean, I can't breathe. I've got junk coming up. Oh my God. It was, it was uh, pretty nasty. So yeah, you, um, this illness was life changing. It really was. It turned my life upside down. I had a friend ask, asked me because I was kind of really grumpy yesterday. And she said, well, she goes, well, what really happened in, Tus in Ohio? It seems like something happened, you know? And I said, uh, yeah, it did happen. I went against my instincts and I went and my life turned upside down. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my life turned upside down. It has not been the same. I haven't been to the gym in three weeks. And before I went to Ohio, my life was on course. I was working out. I was building muscle. I was really going for it. Um, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm sure I'll get it all back and everything will be fine. But my life turned upside down. It did a 180. Yeah. And I don't know if it's going to end up to be a 360. I do feel different. I really do. So you need friends and family, you need money, you need money. Now you also need a very flexible personality. You really do. You have to be flexible as a nomad. And I think if you don't have that type of personality before you started out as a nomad, I think you it will start developing that way because personalities can, can be developed a little bit and changed. But I do believe that it, it, you, if you weren't that way, you will learn to be that way. Otherwise, you'll get off the road. You have to be flexible, and you have to be um, you have to be very creative in how you deal with um, disasters. Excuse me. You have to have your faith in good outcomes. 
So here's where I'm at, folks. Here's where I'm at. Last night, because I was kind of in a bad mood yesterday, last night, or the, and early, in, all throughout the morning, if I would wake up, I was kind of listening to inspirational things. And in my mind, I said, you know what? I feel just fine. I am this, I am sick. I'm feeling sick. This, this whole aura of that has to be thrown out the door. I am going to, I'm going, I'm, when you're, the problem is when you're ill, it's hard to get into that positiveness because you just don't feel good. I mean, if you're not getting a good oxygen, right? But <clears throat> once I feel like, okay, I can kind of get enough oxygen in my blood system right now that my positiveness is starting to take over again. And I'm like, today is the day I'm going to get up. I'm going to get my shower. I'm going to get back on my time, time routine. And I'm going to, when I walk down the hall here and I need to go out to my van a few times, I'm going to, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to think, oh no, I got to get ready for it. And I can't walk. No, I'm going to expect that I can breathe pretty normal. <clears throat> and that's where I'm at. And I did this morning when I walked down there and I came back. It's like, okay, get this sickness um, <clears throat> feeling and, and thought out of my head. And I've got to get back into that. So that's where flexibility comes in and being more of a positive person. The next thing is pre-planning. What, and, and, and you're going to have to figure that out for yourself. I mean, I mentioned the disasters, illness, vehicle repairs, serious accidents, you know, a disaster in your area. What are you going to do with that? Or a loss of a partner. If something happens and you have to go, you're traveling with somebody and all of a sudden everything switches over to where you're going to go solo again. Are you going to find, are you going to go with another tribe? Are you going to find another tribe? Um, what are you going to do while you're grieving? Things like that. This is pre-planning stuff. And I think that that's also important. Um, I know that these things can happen like out of, out of nowhere. They come out of nowhere. This came out of nowhere, not being able to breathe. Um, Max says pacemaker kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, who knew? He, he didn't know that he'd have to go into the hospital and have surgery. My appendix. Who knew that an older person is one of the most misdiagnosed um, diseases? For senior citizens, they just think, oh, that's a childhood thing. No, um, adults are getting missed. They, they're having a lot of um, issues, digestion, things like that. What's happening is their appendix is starting to go bad. And that's what was going on for me for, I think, a few years before. But that's a whole other story. But it, we can get misdiagnosed as seniors. And these things just crop up out of nowhere. Yeah. So, and so could an accident. So... I'm giving you food for thought. I'm tickling your brain a little bit. I'm tickling you um, to think of these things. I know a lot of you want to get going with Nomad Life, and a lot of you are in it, or you're just getting started, or you've been in it a while, but nothing's really happened. Well, let me tell you, I'm not, I don't wish it on anybody, but these things crop up. I've had my share, and I've been a Nomad for seven years, and I've gotten through it all. So, yay. I mean, they're, they're, this, is, this is a good thing. Okay, so yeah, my hair, I'm, it's still a little damp. It's, you know what I've been doing? Here's a side note. I've been using the castor oil on my hair. I need to like put some lotion on it right now. It's still drying, but um, wow. I want to do a whole episode about castor oil, what I'm learning about it. It really feels like my hair is thickening up and it's starting to repair because castor oil is the most penetrating the ability to penetrate of all oils yeah and so it can oil it can actually get into your um your hair fibers yeah and it's good for the face i've noticed an increase in my face oh my gosh yeah and now i'm putting castor oil on my chest because it can penetrate into um into your your um heart and your lungs and everything so yeah okay castor oil, but i want to do an episode on that so i'm going to say goodbye this is uh, Eclipse Day. Peace. May we all get through it, right? With all the 
prophecy going on and oh my god cern starting up oh my goodness um and then they're gonna <clears throat> put uh, shoot out of a rocket i don't, I don't know <clears throat> like they said on jurassic park i remember he said just because we can do it doesn't mean we should do it right do you remember that i remember um jeff goldblum his character said that there's one other thing i want to mention um, some uh, I, I've gotten a few orders on my website for sunglasses and neck gaiters. Yeah, I will get to them. I have I can't I haven't been to my um, storage and I can't get to the mail to the post office, obviously. But within like the end of this week, I promise I will get those out. So just be patient. I know you know that. And I've also gotten um, some gifts from you because you know that I've really, this is expensive staying in a hotel. Yeah, this is like a, a vacation that wasn't planned, <laughs> right? I already went on vacation and now this is, yeah. If you see it in your heart, and don't do it if you can't, I mean, come on. Um, but if you can and you see it in your heart and you enjoy my videos and you wanna support me, go to minivanlee.com and it's an easy to navigate website and right at the top it says gifts. And of course there's other things too. You're gonna to have to wait till I can get to it to get it mailed off to you. Cause I'm just a one woman show here. But if you see it in your heart, just to give me a gift, um, any amount, um, it is much appreciated. So um, I don't want my savings to get depleted on me here. And um, there, I don't wanna beg. Um, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just um, letting you know that this would be much appreciated plus don't worry. Don't worry about using my website. It's the same company that when you order from Amazon, you know, the credit card company, um, it's the same thing. So don't worry that, oh, you know, um, it's not going to be secure. It is totally secure. It's, it's um, the same company that um, all other, uh, you know, e-commerce sites use. So don't be scared. So thank you so much for watching this. <clears throat> I've got my breakfast. I don't care. I've got a microwave. I can warm it up. But yeah. So until tomorrow, I know I'll, I want to get something together for you tomorrow too, because listen to me, I'm talking better and I'm looking up. I'm looking up. One other thing. What can I mention this, please? One other thing is I, I have had over the course, but I just had somebody recently say, saying, um, his name is God, quit just pointing upward. Well, let me just say this about that. It's sort of like, there's certain, the algorithms. I want my, cause I have good information and I do mention him. And otherwise with the algorithms, what will happen is if you say it too often, uh, you'll get buried and they won't put your, um, your video algorithms will bury your, uh, your videos I'm just saying I mean please don't judge me okay I know what I'm doing and I'm a grown woman I mean I I'm, I'm, I'm pretty intelligent I'm, and I know how the system works so and unless you have your own uh, YouTube channel you know um, you don't really know that so yeah just I know I know who he is and I love him so much and uh, yeah and when I point up, just know that, um, you know, where my heart is. So until tomorrow, don't look at the sun, anybody, okay? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Unless you got glasses. Love you.